At the beginning of the movie, animal traffickers break into a zoo and stealthily steal a lion cub. They load the poor animal onto a plane and take off to another location. We are introduced to the protagonist of the film, a 25-year-old girl named Elma. She is an aspiring pianist and a passionate animal lover. One day, she heads to a vacation island and discovers that her late grandfather was the owner of the island. Elma was adopted by the old man when she was young, and she considered him her grandfather. Now, after his death, she has inherited the island. When she arrives, her caretaker Uncle Raoul welcomes her. On the island, there is a beautiful, comfortable, and peaceful cabin to spend the vacation. That night, Elma watches her grandfather's videos and gets emotional. In one of the videos, he mentions that a wolf named Snow suddenly appeared on the island a few years ago, and they became good friends. He advises Elma to find the wolf and befriend her, as she can be a wonderful companion. That night, the plane carrying the lion cub encounters bad weather and crashes on the island. A terrified Elma ventures out of her house to inspect, but due to the island's vastness, she doesn't see anything. The next morning, a couple of boys, Alberto and Eli, arrive on the island and set traps to capture snow. It turns out they own a wolf park and are desperate to take the intelligent wolf with them. After a while, snow ends up being captured, but thanks to her intelligence, she frees herself before the captors arrive. She swims to the other end of the island, where she encounters Elma. At first, Elma is scared, but when she remembers her grandfather talking about Snow's kindness, she calms down. Elma helps Snow escape from the remaining trap and sets her free. After a while, Elma reaches the crash site of the plane. Fortunately, the lion cub is unharmed due to the soft landing on a bird's nest. Just then, the mother bird arrives and drops the cub, causing it to land directly in Elma's arms. Seeing the frightened little animal, Elma takes it home. At the same time, Snow also arrives with her own cub. Elma is surprised to have three wild animals at home. She immediately calls Uncle Raoul, who advises her to inform the authorities because the animals can be dangerous. He also informs her that a pair of park rangers will visit shortly to find out the whereabouts of the lion. In the next scene, the rangers arrive on a boat, but Elma decides to hide the animals because she knows how cruel the zookeepers can be. She lies to the rangers, telling them that she hasn't seen any animals nearby, and returns home. Surprisingly, Elma realizes that Snow is feeding both her cub and the lion cub at the same time. This relieves Elma, as she no longer has to worry about the animal's diet. Over the course of the following days, the two cubs become close friends, and Elma loves them as if they were her own children. She names the wolf Julian and the lion Dreamer. Meanwhile, Uncle Raoul remains unaware that the animals are still residing on the island. Months pass, and the cubs have grown. Elma takes them for nightly walks and shows them her favorite spot, which she used to visit often with her grandfather. At night, Snow feeds the two medium-sized cubs and satisfies their appetite. One day, while Elma is auditioning for a record label, the rangers return to the island and capture Snow, taking her away. Meanwhile, Elma is selected for the job she auditioned for and becomes ecstatic. However, when she returns to the island, her happiness quickly turns into horror as she finds her house completely destroyed by the animals. They did it out of extreme hunger. Worried, Elma searches the entire island for snow but cannot find her. With no other option, she is forced to prepare food for the cubs. Due to the added responsibility, she has to give up her newly acquired job. One morning, Uncle Raoul arrives to see how Elma is doing, and upon seeing that the animals are still there, he becomes furious and orders them to be taken to a zoo immediately. However, Elma makes him understand that her grandfather's wish was to be close to the animals. She also mentions the horrors the cubs will endure if they are sent to a zoo. Upon hearing all of this, Uncle Raoul is finally convinced and lovingly embraces Elma. Now, they dedicate most of their time to feeding the cubs and providing them with the best care possible. Although Elma is unemployed and has very little time to play the piano, 
she is very happy with her life. She loves her new friends dearly, and in return, they also love her. A year passes, and now the cubs have grown into adults. Uncle Raoul brings meat and other supplies from the city for the animals, but he is too afraid to get close to them. He repeatedly tells his niece that the animals are not safe now that they are adults. However, Elma, who does not want to give them up, has decided to live on this island forever, taking care of the two animals. On a normal day, a mother and her daughter approach the island in a boat. The girl sees beautiful flowers and asks her mother to take her to them. Meanwhile, Julian notices the new humans and immediately tries to approach them out of curiosity. Elma, who is also nearby, senses the danger and tries to stop Julian but ends up slipping and hitting her head on a rock. This leaves her unconscious immediately. At the same time, the mother and daughter leave the island without spotting the animals. Shortly after, Julian and Dreamer approach Elma and try to wake her up, but without success. They whimper for several hours, possibly seeking help, but no one arrives. The day turns into night, and the animals stay close to Elma to keep her warm. The next morning, Uncle Raoul tries to call Elma several times, but as she doesn't answer, he realizes something is wrong and heads to the island to inspect. Unfortunately, he deduces that the animals have harmed her and immediately calls animal control. After a while, he finds her unconscious alongside the animals. Roel regrets his actions. In the next scene, Elma is taken to a hospital where the doctor informs Uncle Roel that if the animals hadn't kept Elma warm during the night, she most likely would have died of hypothermia. On the other hand, Animal Control introduces Julian to him and Alberto. After some checks, they find out that Julian is none other than Nieves' own cub. Meanwhile, Dreamer is handed over to a zoo run by Alan and his young son, Rafa. Alan is a cruel man who often mistreats his animals, but young Rafa is kind and sweet. She quickly forms an emotional bond with Dreamer and visits him regularly to calm him down. However, after a few days, Dreamer is heavily sedated and forced to perform in circuses. The poor lion had lived his entire life relaxed on the island, and now the sudden brutality begins to take a toll on him. This upsets young Rafa, who always tries to do everything possible to make the animal feel happy. In another location, Elma finally wakes up. Upon waking up, she asks Uncle Raoul about her animals. He tells her that they are in a safe place. Upon hearing this, she feels relieved, but she still misses them deeply. When she is discharged from the hospital, she goes straight to animal control and learns that Julian has been taken to a wolf park, while Dreamer is confined in a cruel circus. Enraged, Elma yells at one of the present agents, but Raoul calms her down and takes her away. Shortly after, she calls Eli and asks about Julian's well-being. Eli informs her that Julian is doing well in the park and has made many friends. They take good care of him. Upon hearing this, Elma feels somewhat relieved, but she still wishes to know about Dreamer. She spends the following weeks going to all the circuses in the city and asking everyone she encounters. But she doesn't get any information. Meanwhile, Alan has started making a lot of money with Dreamer's appearance in his circus, and the lion quickly becomes a star. However, nobody knows his real name, and they simply call him Stellar Lion. One day, Dreamer's circus team passes by Wolf Park, and Julian immediately recognizes his best friend. Without wasting any time, Julian frees himself from captivity and rushes to inspect the situation. Elma is surprised when she sees Julian and quickly deduces that he is a very intelligent wolf and is searching for something. Soon, Julian arrives at the place where Dreamer is held captive and cleverly frees him from the cage. The two are thrilled to reunite after months of separation and play for a while. Furious, Alan grabs his tranquilizer gun and prepares to go after the lion. His son, Rafa, tries to convince him to leave the poor lion alone, but the greedy man doesn't listen. Fearing that something bad might happen, Rafa also decides to join Alan in their search. In the next scene, Eli learns from her friend that Julian has escaped from captivity to find his friend, the lion.
Now that both animals have disappeared, there is a major alert in the city. That night, Eli heads to the island and informs Elma of the situation. He also tells her that the two animals are roaming freely, which has led authorities and hunters to pursue them. When Elma expresses concern, he reveals that they have placed a tracker inside Julian. However, due to poor connection, they are unaware of his exact location. Nevertheless, the animals were last seen near a forest. With this information, they decide to go search for Julian and Dreamer. Meanwhile, the animals wander through the city, causing residents to stay locked in their homes. On one occasion, they even entered a large department store in search of food. As a result, the police give permission to residents to shoot the animals on sight. A few hours later, Elma and Eli arrive at the forest where they encounter Alan and Rafa. The greedy circus owner tries to shoot Dreamer, but Julian intervenes and takes the tranquilizer shot, immediately fainting. This worries young Rafa, and after the lion flees, he rushes to Julian and removes the dart and the tracking device. He also gives Julian a pill to reduce the effects of the tranquilizer. Afterward, the father and son duo head to a bar where they are approached by Elma. It turns out they followed the tracker. Unaware of their presence, Alan mentions that he no longer has it and dismisses them. However, Rafa realizes that Elma is onto something and decides to provide her with crucial information. He pretends to go to the bathroom and tells Elma and Eli everything. They all head to the forest where they finally reunite with Dreamer. They then follow the lion and arrive at a shed where Julian is resting. Fortunately, Julian has regained consciousness thanks to Rafa's quick thinking. Just then, the police arrive at the location, prompting Elma to lead the animals through a secret path. Now, only the water current keeps them away from their private island. Elma desperately wants to reach it, as even the police have no jurisdiction on the island. Unfortunately, there is no boat, so everyone has to swim to the other side. Julian, being a wolf, immediately jumps in the water, but Dreamer hesitates due to his fear of water. Elma tries to convince him, but Dreamer turns around and ventures into the jungle. Shortly after, as an anxious Elma and Julian swim towards the island, a gunshot is heard, indicating that Dreamer is no longer there. Elma reaches the island and begins to cry profusely, but suddenly Dreamer arrives. It turns out he returned to the jungle alone to distract the police. Seeing him back brings joy to everyone. In the final scene, Elma gives a piano concert for people who have arrived on her island by boat. Dreamer and Julian are also present, living as a happy family. The movie ends as Elma shares the story of her pets with the crowd, making everyone emotional and happy. It is natural for two individuals with deep feelings to embrace each other, even after a long time apart. But what about wild animals and humans? Can dangerous wild animals do something so similar to humans? Needless to say, hyenas are dangerous wild animals with highly unpredictable behavior. But just like some captive raised wild animals, some of them seem to be the exception. According to Christian, hyenas are actually misunderstood. Christian is originally from Switzerland but now lives in South Africa, where he has created a sanctuary for wild animals and a rehabilitation center. He left his well-paying jobs as a banker and financial planner to live and work with wild animals. Among the many animals he has encountered, there is one particular hyena that holds a special place in his heart. Her name is Chucky, a female hyena living in the sanctuary. You may know that the name is the same as the famous evil doll from horror movies, but this Chucky is not bloodthirsty, at least not a threat to humans. Christian and Chucky have been friends for a long time, in fact, since she was a cub. Their bond was very strong, and two months after Christian left, he finally saw Chucky again in a video he uploaded online. In the video, you can see what he did before entering the enclosure. He explained how he was very careful because he knew the risks of getting too close to wild animals. At first, Chucky's body language showed a message of caution. Chucky waited for a few minutes, making herself more familiar and in tune with Christian's presence before entering the enclosure. Chucky was ecstatic when she saw him. 
The footage shows them playing and hugging as if the hyena were a loyal pet. Humans and wild animals have been separated for over a year, but their reactions were equally friendly and enthusiastic. Let's see the story of Lorena and Emilio. Most people are afraid to approach lions, and their roars often shake people. Only a few individuals have the opportunity to have direct contact with a lion. This story is about a person who enters the cage of a lion. In reality, it is the story of a lion reuniting with its former trainer after many years, and their reaction when they finally meet again is incredible. Let me introduce you to Lorena. She is a beautiful lioness living in the Black Panther White Tiger Foundation Sanctuary in Mexico City. Like other lions, she is enormous, powerful, and dangerous. Before becoming a fierce beast, Lorena was a helpless lion cub. In fact, she was found in Mexico, rescued by humans, and taken to the sanctuary. Emilio became her adoptive father and took care of her with the love and devotion of a father to his children. This allowed them to develop a very close relationship with this magnificent feline. Emilio relates to the lioness in such a way that, instead of treating her as a dangerous wild animal, he sees her as part of his family. They share a deep bond built on trust and affection. When they reunite after a long time apart, their interaction is heartwarming. Lorena recognizes Emilio, and her joy is evident as they embrace each other. This story shows that despite the perceived dangers, humans and wild animals can form incredible connections based on mutual respect and love. Instead of showing aggression towards him, she acts like a tame and friendly domestic cat. Emilio knew that sooner or later he would have to say goodbye to Lorena. And when that day finally came, both Emilio and Lorena were clearly devastated, bidding farewell and embracing each other with the hope of seeing each other again soon. Lorena was then transferred to the Black Panther White Tiger Foundation Sanctuary, and a year after their separation, she grew and became stronger. She was no longer a helpless cub but had transformed into an adult lion whose roar resonated in the sky. Did you know that the roar of lions is the loudest among all the big cats and can be heard up to 8 kilometers away? Hearing such a roar from a lion can instill fear in one's heart. Her adoptive father Emilio came to receive her at the sanctuary and approached her enclosure. Let's see what happens when Emilio and Lorena reunite at last. As Emilio approached the cage, he called Lorena by her name. Lorena heard his voice and immediately reacted, searching for the source of the sound. The magnificent lioness knew that something was about to happen. Nervously, she paced back and forth inside the cage. The caregiver at the sanctuary said that it might not be a good idea for him to enter the cage with her, as she may not recognize him after not seeing him for a year. Although she has been in captivity since she was a cub, she is still a wild animal, and like all wild animals, you never know how they will react. The caretakers are aware that Lorena may have forgotten who Emilio is and that she might attack him. Emilio is also a little worried, but he believes in the deep bond between them and that the time they spent apart won't affect Lorena. Holding on to the belief in their connection, he saw it coming as she paced incessantly in front of the cage door, emitting unmistakable growls as he approached. When he was about to enter the cage, Lorena stood behind the door, and the only thing separating them was the iron bars of the cage. The lioness appeared fierce, and this situation was very dangerous even for a seasoned animal tamer. Let's see if the lion will recognize her original trainer or attack Emilio. After opening the door and stepping into the cage, Emilio called her name again, and when Lorena saw him, Emilio's reaction after years of separation was incredible. She seemed to recognize him immediately. Adrenaline surged through his body as soon as he entered the cage. She pounced on him, and Emilio tried to stay on his feet as she grabbed him with her enormous claws. But no one can fight a lion with bare hands, and Lorena was so large and strong that she easily brought them both to the ground with a single blow. Emilio lay on the ground while Lorena loomed over him. He was pressed against the floor, unable to get up. Her claws continued to press against his body, grazing his arms and legs, and she licked him repeatedly. She didn't want to let him go, and they struggled for a few intense moments. 
But suddenly, Lorena's demeanor changed. She released her grip and stepped back, allowing Emilio to rise. It seemed that she realized who he was and remembered their bond. Emilio and Lorena embraced, their reunion filled with emotions. The deep trust and affection between them overpowered any fear or aggression. They had reaffirmed their connection, and their bond remained unbroken despite the time apart. It only lasted for a few minutes, and it wasn't dangerous. Instead, what was seen was like a scene of a daughter playing with her father. It had been a long time since she had seen her father, and she was obviously overjoyed to see him, wanting to embrace him tightly. The sanctuary decided to share the video on their social media accounts, which has generated over 8 million views since its publication in 2015. Viewers were astonished by the incredible reaction of the lion. Some were moved by the abundance of love between them, while others expressed concerns about Emilio's safety, as he was wrestling with an adult lion. To be clear, after their reunion, Emilio did not suffer any injuries or problems. It is possible that he may have had some muscle strain, which is quite normal considering he wrestled with an adult lion weighing between 270 and 400 pounds. Whether animals have feelings remains a widely debated question among scientists, and there is still no definitive answer. This is primarily due to the limitations of studying an animal's brain compared to humans, preventing a complete understanding of how an animal feels. However, I believe that we all would like to believe that animals experience emotions like we do. In the case of Lorena and Emilio, the love shown by the lions towards humans will undoubtedly be remembered. Who would have thought that a huge and fierce lion could suddenly transform into a playful kitten? Their story didn't end with this encounter, in fact, it was just the beginning. The bond between Emilio and Lorena grows stronger every day, and he has been sharing updated videos with Lorena on social media. It seems that they are doing well in Emilio's story with his loyal animal companion. Lorena turns out to be a great lion with big claws and sharp teeth, but also a kind-hearted one. Making friends with wild animals is quite daring and, of course, only experts in the field can do it. These stories tell us that wild animals also have a friendly and kind side. A woman who was hit by a car for speeding was in for the worst, but then a dog miraculously showed up. In Georgia, there is a quaint town. Shannon lived in this quiet place for a long time, and she remembers living in the home with her husband, who, like everyone else in the community, lived together. Until January 26, Shannon experienced a life-changing event. That night, she and her husband had a fight, and while quarrels are common in marriages, the escalation accelerated and Shannon struggled to cope. After the argument, Shannon wanted a little privacy, so she left the house and headed for her car, which was freezing cold due to the cooling at night. She jumped into the car and left quickly. Although she has many years of driving experience and knows the traffic rules, she doesn't want to think about safety at all because she is very angry. It seemed like an outlet, so she picked up the pace. She drove faster and faster, her heart pounding against her chest. If you go to Georgia, you will notice that there are large forests in this area, the state has a lot of lush trees. While such views are often admired, they can sometimes be a source of distress for travelers or drivers. Known for its long, winding roads, combined with countless trees, one should exercise caution, especially when driving the famous Nazca roads. Shannon finally took that road. Although she heard that traffic accidents in this area are prone to occur, the emotions in the quarrel still made her very angry. Safety was not her first consideration, and then Shannon still on the windy path, when she first approached a dangerous bend, she was able to steer the car without issue before she needed to turn again, which she quickly learned. Shannon recalled, when I came into the second corner, the car wasn't the same as it was in the previous turn. This time the rear of the car was broken. Shannon was thrown from the driver's seat and through the car's rear glass. When the poor woman awoke again, her head hit the glass and she was unconscious. Her mind was spinning, she couldn't foresee the situation she was in because everything was a blur, she could feel her legs in the back seat, her body in an uncomfortable position, she was trapped. 
Because my car hit a tree, anyone passing by couldn't see me, Shannon said. Her car slammed into a tree suddenly and violently, only to be noticed when people stopped and walked. Cars were flying by, and people couldn't see how messed up the place was. Shannon realized that no one was coming for her, and she panicked, thinking of her husband and their argument, and regretting driving to where she was now. She was so weak that she cried with all her might when Shannon was about to give up. A curious dog suddenly approached the car as a stray dog rescued the dying woman from a car crash. She was convinced that she would be trapped there forever and no one would find her until she was unconscious. Reflecting on the moment, Shannon said, I didn't know if it was making the rounds, I didn't know if it was going back to its original owner, but it met me and I thank God it did. The dog dragged her she walked more than 100 feet to get help, and thanks to this amazing act of kindness, the woman was saved. The mysterious animal dragged her from a tree to a meadow and eventually they reached an area next to a road. Shannon had a better chance of being rescued on the side of the road because drivers were more likely to see her. However, Shannon still felt she needed to do more and lay on the ground waiting for a car to come by. Encouraged by the furry animal, Shannon attempted to drag herself away from the bushes. She struggled at first, but the dog didn't give up on her, so it got close to her and bent down slightly, as if sticking out its neck towards her. Shannon put his arm around the dog's neck and pulled as hard as she could, standing up for the first time since the crash. She could feel the wind on her hair and skin, it was a cold night and she didn't have many clothes on. The thought of the dog walking on for her warmed her heart, but they stood together, waiting for someone to come. A car finally came when Shannon grabbed the dog. It was dark and she couldn't see very well, so she couldn't tell what kind of car it was. Still, Shannon was overjoyed when the car pulled up to where she and the dog were. With all her strength, she leaned through the window and asked the passengers for help. She almost cried, she said, I just crashed the car, can you call my husband? She used a lot of strength for Shannon's fragile body, but she soon fainted again fall down. She was unconscious, and the stranger in the car quickly called and offered her the help she needed. When Shannon opened her eyes some time later, she found herself lying on a hospital bed. After she woke up, a doctor came to her soon after, recalling what had happened to her. Although Shannon was still hazy in her sleep, she could make out the doctor's worried expression. The doctor said her name discreetly, Shannon, you've got a bit of a brain bleed. After hearing the nerve-wracking news, the doctors and nurses had to figure out whether their new patient needed surgery. A brain hemorrhage can be serious, so they need to make the best decision possible to make sure Shannon is okay. While she waited, Shannon lay in bed, and while she had been resting, her thoughts returned to the fight, the car crash and the dog that had saved her life. Everything that had happened in the past 24 hours seemed like a dream. Hours passed before the doctor returned to Shannon's room. Fortunately, the doctors confirmed that the bleeding was not significant and as long as she kept resting, her body would heal itself, meaning she didn't need any expensive or dangerous surgery and she could return to the home comfortably under the care of her husband. Shannon was able to fully recover because of everything the dog did, it was a fantastic animal. If he hadn't saved me, I wouldn't be here today, Shannon said. She was full of praise for the dog, even though Shannon initially thought the dog had an owner and that it had just gotten lost. Yet after such a heroic act, they could no longer ignore the dog. The dog was taken in by the Humane Society as Shannon recovered from his injuries. This dog has attracted a lot of attention, and he was lucky enough to be adopted. Since then, it has been given a name that many consider to be the perfect expression of its character. He was named Hero, and Heidi was adopted by Heidi Drudy. This woman is a canine search and rescue instructor and she couldn't have been a better owner of this rescue dog. Heidi immediately began training Hero, who she plans to become a certified search and rescue dog. A search and rescue dog that's ready to go, we're training it right now, and it's doing a really good job, Heidi explained. It's amazing to think that a hero can be there to find someone in need. Without any kind of training, everyone can see how pure it is inside, Shannon shared in the interview. 
The video was quickly uploaded to the internet and has amassed thousands of views. Towards the end of the video, Shannon burst into tears as she thanked the dog for helping her, it will always be my hero. If you enjoyed hearing this miracle story, please like it below and subscribe for more.